Hi all, I'm Vladimir, you are on the Beamerbug channel. This video will be actually very interesting. It will be not the video about the specific vehicle we are working with, but today I'll just spend uh, one day in the Hell Car Garage and actually you can see on the background uh, that, uh, yes, that white one, it's mine BMW. I'm going to race on Nürburgring uh, next week. So that's why some preps are needed to be done, uh, basically changing the uh, everything that's connected to the brake system and also some more uh, parts uh, also needed to be changed. In addition to that, behind me, that F11, some works have to be done with that also. I'll be working with the AdBlue system. I'll show you in a great detail how to remove that system completely. So I'll show you from the beginning till the end, so it'll be very good. On the background, you can see uh, the guys from the Helga garage. They're working on my car. Uh, they are removing the wheels at the moment to replace the brakes, rear uh, brake rotors and all the uh, brake pads. Of course, the sensors as well. Actually, guys, to be honest, this is my first BMW. I'm not, I'm not changing brakes by myself, but it's absolutely okay. Because meanwhile, guys will be working on my car. I'll be working with their car. So that's why we have some uh, speciality uh, who is doing what jobs. And in that way, it is way, way more efficient. If you still haven't subscribed to my channel, please feel free to do so. Recently, I have released a video about how to install all the needed software to work with the BMW. If you haven't seen that video, absolutely make sure to do that. Because without special software, you cannot just work with BMW. And let's go. During that video, I'll be just switching between the different cars, telling the story, what have to be done with that car and what's the progress, and also show you the end result. As you can see, the wheels have already been removed. First, before you are going to replace anything suspension or brake related, or actually whatever parts, always compare with the original parts. We are still waiting for the brand new parts to come in, so the guys can compare actually what the factory has provided with the ones that have been installed because in my car I have an M suspension with the M brakes and everything that's why if you will be ordering the regular brakes they will just not fit here that's why you definitely need to compare to avoid any misunderstandings and meanwhile I have grabbed my laptop and let's have a look what's wrong with that F11 I have prepared already my power supply actually it is already hooked up, I'll just disconnect it because I need to start the car to make the proper diagnostics. Let's go into the car and see what actually wrong with that. So you can see there's error with the AdBlue system, so something is definitely wrong with that. As always, whatever job you're doing, the Thing number one will be make the diagnostics. Step number two will be repair or fix the issue. And step number three, make the diagnostics again. So let's begin with the diagnostics. I have made the diagnostics. You can see the screen on my laptop at the moment. We can see there is engine ECU and the AdBlue ECU, the SCR ECU. They have some errors in those. Let's have a closer look. So uh, this is due to the uh, particle filter not functioning properly and a system fault of the SCR control ECU okay and one of the NOx sensor is actually not giving the right result the error is stored only one time but because this is the car of the guys from the Helka garage uh, and actually they have told me what was wrong with the car. They have deleted also the fault memory. That's why uh, those errors, they have not been stored for a long time. So it's only like for the short time. That's why I can totally trust uh, what the thing I can see. And I'll just do what they um, asked me to do, only to remove the AdBlue system. I'll show in a great detail how to do that. But always the first step, yes, is diagnostics so I can actually see. Because if you'll perform the job without the diagnostics before, then how can you tell afterwards if the job is done or not? What else? Actually, I want to see. The software level is 2016. 
Uh, I'm not sure if that's the newest software for the, that kind of car or there's some newer available. That's why I'll definitely update the software of engine ECU at least. So I don't want to work with the old software. Yes, that's good. Okay, I have seen everything I need in the ISTA. It's always good to make the picture of all the errors and store them to your desktop or wherever you prefer. Of course, yes, ISTA, it makes also the uh, log in the PDF format of all the errors. But I always prefer to save in the same format. Okay, that's good. And let's start the ACS. I will use version 3.36. I have ignition running. Uh, I have connected the power supply. Everything as I'm showing you in my videos. Current video is not full tutorial how to use the ACS. I have made several videos about uses, usage of the ACS. The ACS for dummies, highly recommended to see those. But in, in current video, I'll definitely show you some tricks with the ACS you have never seen before. At least not on my channel, and I really doubt that you have even found, you can find that information anywhere on the internet. So that's why, see very carefully. So we have set up the connection to the vehicle. We can see everything can be read out. The first thing I need to do is to calculate the software to update all these issues. But actually, I don't need all the ECUs. I need to see if any update is possible for the engine ECU. Why I'm, why I'm updating the engine ECU? Because BMW has released uh, several bug fixes for the uh, EGR. This is exhaust gas recirculation. And if you will not make the update and just delete the AdBlue system on the older software, your EGR will, will not work properly. That's why it's just not point. Also, if you're making, for example, chip tuning, always update the software before making the chip tuning. Because if you chip tune it first and update the software afterwards, you will just lose your chip tuning. That's why there is no point in that. In the engine ECU, we can actually see that, yes, updates are available. So let's update the engine ECU first. A lot of you have asked me a lot of times, Please, Vladimir, make a full video how to uh, program the ECUs with the ACS. I promise you, I will make that video. It will come out during that year for sure. Over there, I'll definitely explain why in the ACS I'm pressing certain buttons I'm pressing, in the sequence I'm pressing, and tell all the stories. So that's why if you are really interested in that kind of information, please stand by for that. It will come it will definitely come because ACS is engineering software it is a bit too complicated for a regular user just to understand for the first glance what's happening over here but believe me if someone tells you why to pre what to press and why to press you'll get the logic and it's not as hard anymore as it looks like Just working with the ACs, there are several steps you just cannot avoid. If you avoid those steps, you'll ruin the car. Okay, everything looks okay to me. That's good. To make the video shorter, I'm just not skipping, I'm not showing you some t steps I'm doing that's a mandatory during the update. For example, uh, checking the, the ignition is on, power supply is on, it's actually delivering the power to the car and so on and so on. I'm doing those on the background. I'm just a bit uh, saving the time because otherwise the video will be just too long for the YouTube. And now update is running. 
you can see that the engine ECU will be updated for the next five minutes. You can see it over here. At the moment ACES is still making their calculations. And now the new software starts coming in. It's still 0%, but over here you will see that the percentage is growing. And we can see the green light update is successfully finished. What I usually prefer to do, I go to coding tab, there is 39 ECUs at the moment. I press read ECU and there still should be 39. It means all ECUs are online, still 39. We are opening the engine ECU, we can see no files are corrupted, everything is okay. We have updated the engine ECU. Now very important step before you are actually going to modify the engine software start the car. It is your zero point. If you don't start the car, you don't know where was the error in the original BMW software or in the software your chip tuner has uh, made for you. That's why starting the engine after the software update is a must. And let's try starting the engine. Pressing the start. Engine starts. Everything is okay with engine ECU software. And now we can proceed with reading out the engine ECU software, modify it and writing it back. Let's open the software for the chip tuning. Because in order to modify the software inside the engine ECU, you cannot make it with the standard BMW tools. That's why Bitbox, for example, will be required. Of course, there is a lot of different tools you can make the same job, like uh, KTAC, Bitbox, PCM Flash, and so on and so on and so on. I just have chosen the current set of tools. If you are really interested why I have chosen those and not other tools, feel free to write comment and I might make video about that. So actually it is very straightforward. You just go select the right car with the right engine. We have that one and we need to identify it first and then read out the software. Bitbox uses the virtual reading. What is virtual reading and what is actual reading? There is actually a huge difference in those. Actual reading, you're reading the file from the ECU itself. Virtual reading, you're just reading the IDs and you're getting the same file from the server. So those are completely different process. So we have the full readout. Always name the files correctly. So it is F11. N57, uh, we have the LSI version and it is flash and it is stock and press save. Also read the coding data and the same F11, N57, LSI coding data. You can also read the errors, what's in the car. There is still two. And remember, we had a uh, couple errors. Let's try to clear those, those errors and read those again. And still those two. Uh, I guess those are uh, AdBlue connected. By those codes, actually, if we'll open the ISTA, we can compare. So let's open our ISTA errors. And can we see? So let's open in more convenient way. So we can see 2 Charlie 3 0. And over here, errors 2 Charlie 3 0. This is about the SCR, so it is the same error. And 1 Alpha 9 1. Uh, 2 alpha 9 1. 2 alpha 9 1. Actually, I cannot see that error in the ISTA at the moment, so it is something new. But at the moment, actually, it doesn't matter. 
but at least in that way you can understand what actually you're seeing there and actually we can close the beatbox i don't need that anymore and now the next step i'll send the same file to the guy uh, who is making the chip tuning files for me i'll tell him what we need to do in current case remove the adblue system and meanwhile on the background he's working with that we still have to do some jobs with that car uh, removing some fuses uh, recoding the car and so on and so on that's why stay tuned meanwhile guys are still working on my car actually there are some things to tell you about the uh, g-series brake rotors and pa uh, pad exchange it is not the same as on the f-series very important detail about the g-series brake system on the f-series for example on the uh, f10 on the 5 and actually on the 7 series f01 there is also the uh, parking brake it is electrical and over there you need to use special function in easter to open it up otherwise you'll just you'll be unable to uh, disassemble and assemble the brake system properly on the g series already actually it is not needed so you can see it from that one so you can see uh, those cut ins so the actual the support itself it is it has to be rotated in in order to uh, put the new brake pads so this is the huge difference so actually you don't need any special software to work on the g series to replace the brakes but i thought it is actually important detail for you to tell because it's always easy to use the specialized software to replace something but if you don't have those for example on g series you can replace brakes by yourself you will not need any additional tools i have received the needed file and let's modify the software in engine ecu actually the process is really straightforward you just select the file you have received from your tuner so actually it's not here my bad guys it's still in downloads you just select the right one it will ask you the beatbox will ask you to open the original file for the check sum calculation it's absolutely okay the thing actually you really need to know that removing the AdBlue system is not as straightforward as regular stage one chip tuning for example the the trick is if you just write the software it will give you no result because you still have to disconnect the SCR or AdBlue ECU from the car itself in addition to that you have to remove from the card information that it had AdBlue installed that's why I just have to use the ACs like in advanced pro mode to remove the uh, ECU from the car and of course for my subscribers for you guys I'll definitely show you how to make it properly but meanwhile let's make everything step by step so at the moment the modified software is being written into the car the process is not hard at all if you know what you're doing and if you are doing that for not for the first time it's really straightforward the writing software back process takes each four to five minutes but still power supply is highly recommended because majority of the errors during the programming happen uh, due to the wrong power supply or faulty power supply or no power supply at all after i have written that file to the car we will still have the AdBlue errors in the car due to the reason that actually some work with the ACs also need to be done Writing back the software has finished, Beatbox tells us to turn off the ignition and wait 15 seconds until we can check the vehicle. Uh, let's turn on the ignition 
let's read out the error codes. And actually it shows zero error codes. So as I told you, there, there was no point to worry about those error codes. So everything is deleted and as you can see, zero is present. But actually, is the job done or not? Of course, it's not done. If I'll connect the ISTA, I'll still see the red SCR ECU uh, that's not working there, or it will be actually not red, it will be yellow because some errors are present there because it's still there. The software has been removed from the engine issue itself, but not from the whole car and so on. So we still have some work to do, guys. But we can close the beatbox. Uh, now let's start again the ACs and let's make some more additional work. Now, guys, the most important how to remove the ECU from the ECU tree in the tree in the ACS. That information is definitely worth subscription, like and uh, comment. Because at least I haven't seen the same information online. And we have got the connection. I'm just reading out. I just want to show you. Uh, 39 ECUs and over here you can see the SCR ECU. If I press read the ECU, the ACs will ask all the ECUs that are online. And if I press read VCM, it will just read out information from the uh, gateway. And SCR is still present. Until there is power going to that ECU, we are reading ECU, we'll get that. But I need to remove that ECU from the that SVT, this is system variable tree, so the ECU tree. How to do that? Remember at the beginning of the video I have updated the uh, engine software and I have done some calculations uh, during that process. I will need those. I can go to the TAL calculating again. I can make all the same calculations again, but actually there is no point to do that. Over here I can still load the same file. I'm loading that one. Yes, okay. And I need to edit it. Over here we have SCR ECU. And actually the easiest way is just press delete. Okay. Go back and ask save. Yes. Now we can still see 38 ECUs. Now the main trick. Go to expert mode. The VCM. This is vehicle configuration manager. In that tab, SVT actual and SVT target, load, modified SVT sole, and to the target as well. You can see 38 ECUs, not 39 anymore. Expand to master tab and press right SVT. Down in the left you can see the SVT has been written. And now let's uh, make a check. Uh, is it really what we have in the car? You can pre press read SVT. It reads out from the vehicle and over here you can see it's only 38. So in the ACs we have done the magic we have needed. Now we still need to disconnect the SCR or AdBlue ECU from the car physically or just remove a couple fuses that are running power to that. Which fuses we have to remove? We'll cover in the next few minutes. One more thing we need to do in the ACs. Actually, in the head unit, if you have the car with the AdBlue, you will see uh, that kind of sign. And actually, it tells you uh, in the head unit that and the SCR system, actually, it shows the counter for that, when you have to refill it and all that stuff. So the proper AdBlue removal requires also that parameter to be deactivated. So that one. Just put it to not active. Yes, I'm using the Beamer Utility Launcher for now. The process looks like a bit different if you're using the plain ACs or whatever other launcher. I'm still, I'm still in the middle of uh, testing of that launcher. I cannot comment anything about that, good or bad. Uh, it's making the job. If you're interested in the comparison video of different launchers, feel free to write about that. 
we can make that, why not? But it will definitely require some time because just downloading the launcher and playing two minutes with that, it will give you nothing. You need to work with that uh, for a longer time. So you'll be way more professional. And actually we have finished in the ACES. Let's run the ISTA now. Let's see what fuses we need to remove and the job will be done. Let's have a closer look to my BMW G30, what works have been done there. So the works the guys have been done on my car so far. So actually under the car, you can see the uh, drivetrain, that rubber mounting. Uh, it was replaced because the old one uh, had also a crack in that. And that's definitely not up to the standards. Also in the rear differential, there were some smaller leaks. So they cleaned up everything uh, just to measure after my drive to Germany and back. So we'll be able to see if any additional leaks are apparent there. And the rest of the works will be done with the brakes. Actually, you know, guys, the M-style brakes, they just cost a fortune. You know those brakes? Actually, there is two cylinders over in that side that are pressing the brake pads together and two cylinders on that side as well. As you can see, the hydraulics, it goes in on one side. There is additional pipe that sends uh, pressure to that side. So there's four cylinders that are pressing the brake pads. That's why those cost just a fortune. You can see some small, uh, more parts over here. So this is huge two component brake discs. Actually, those are the, for the rear axle, not the front one. Just look how huge they are. Uh, that's why they cost just a lot of money. So uh, front br brake pads, those one will be placed. They also uh, uh, very good. And of course, the brand new sensors. I always recommend you to always put the brand new sensors. Do not use the old ones. You will have less way uh, headache if you just place new parts. Just for comparison, so this is the rear brake disc and let's compare the front one. Actually, you can see how massive is that one compared to the rear one. And those brakes have saved my life at least a couple times, so uh, definitely the money well spent. So brakes are being replaced. The problem is with those calipers that those are painted, that's why working with those should be extra careful not to damage the paint. And those M Performance brakes, they are definitely with a bit more difficult construction than the regular brakes and require a bit more skills. Also, did you know that if you do install those M Performance brakes, those even uh, special SA code for that, those are not just the bigger calipers, the system is even different inside the car and also it has to be coded to the vehicle. So it's not just replacing the mechanical parts because the DSC ECU, the ECU that's responsible for the stability of the car, the one that's actually pressing the brakes, it will apply, apply different pressure on those brakes. brakes. Uh, that's why coding is also needed if you do install those and those did not come to a vehicle from the factory. And as usually some things can go really, really wrong. So this is my front left caliper. As you can see, four cylinders and you can see that one, actually, you see, it doesn't go in to the full extent. Actually, it has been stuck there. That's why we have ordered the uh, a repair kit to fix the tissue. That's why my car will stay in the same service for one more day. Installing new brakes, rear rotor brakes, uh, rotor discs, and also the rear brake pads. Always, if you replace the rotor disc, you need to replace brake pads as well. I have done the diagnostics. Remember, we had SCR ECU somewhere over here. It's not present anymore, and that's the result we need to achieve. But we still have. A lot of different errors in the car present. Let's just delete the errors and it will be done. In addition, remember I told you that we need to remove the fuses from the SCR ECU so it will be not visible. Of course we need to do that. Actually about that I have created uh, some times ago one YouTube Shorts. Uh, I guess I put a link over here. 
So have a look, over there I tell exactly what number of the fuse need to re be removed. And of course, where to get the information, the EAST will tell you what ECU is supplied uh, through which fuses. Deleting the fault memory. Engine ECU is already green, I can see it, that's absolutely good. And zero errors are present. I have not started the car yet, so let's disconnect the power supply, start the car, run the diagnostics again, and we'll see what will be the end result. And let's start the car. And before that, remember, we had some errors present. Over here, you cannot see the AdBlue system anymore. Check control. And actually, the door is open, the bonnet is open, and install date and time. I don't even know what language is that, but actually you can understand something. But you don't see the AdBlue error anymore. Of course, let's make the vehicle test. Starting vehicle test. And we should again see exactly the same green tree. Vehicle test has been done. Zero errors, everything is green. But let's still remove the fuses. Because only after removing those fuses, the job will be completely as it should be done. We need to remove two fuses. In the rear fuse books, one. And in the front fuse books, also one. So the, the fuse, 15 amperes, it will be number 111. So this is responsible for the uh, SCR system. So I have removed that. And let's go to the front. It will be very hard to show you which one has to be deleted. It is in the front of fuse box. But the easiest way to show that is just check the diagram F21. And this is how it looks like. Just remove the proper fuse. And that will be the 30 amper fuse. So it's, yeah, it's nice focus now, 30 amperes. Now let's start the car. If you have removed something in addition to that, you'll have some more errors. You can see, so the bonnet, the door, uh, the trunk, and actually the date. So no AdBlue errors. Nothing in addition to that is present, so it is already very good. And we can tell the job is done, but actually, remember in the ISTA, we did not see any errors, so everything was already okay without even removing the fuses. But remember in the ACS, we are still able to see that uh, SCR ECU. So, as the final thing, let's run the ACS again, and let's check if we can see it or not. So let's quickly connect via the ACS. F10, connect, yes. And the good result will be if we are reading out the ECUs. And actually, we will not see 39, but we should see 38 ECUs. And reading ECU. And you can see 38. Reading out the VCM. And still 38. So this is the proper job. I will not finish the job, uh, the video yet actually, because we haven't still done anything with my car due to the parts did not arrive. I will include the same thing in the same video as I promised you, but it will be a couple days later for me and for you it will be instantly. Guys, you might wonder what could go wrong during the regular brake replacement, but actually a lot of things. As in case of my car, you have seen that one of the cylinders was stuck. Actually, you can see the pictures over here. The problem is that with the M suspension, with the M brakes, those calipers, they are made from aluminum. And also the brake cylinder itself, it's also made from aluminum. That's why if just small amount of water goes there, a huge corrosion will occur. That's why it will not work properly. But finally, the case is solved. It took a bit more time, but it's still uh, absolutely okay. Everything dri drives super fine. Just be careful. If you make full brake replacement in the rear and the front axle, 
all, always, always just be careful at the beginning because your brakes will be not operational 100% instantly. Have a look. For example, on my rear axle, I have replaced both the discs and the brakes, brake pad also. And you can see the surface is still uneven. It should be really polished as a mirror, but it is not. It means that the brake pads do not touch the discs properly yet. So that's why a bit more driving is needed. I really hope that you enjoyed the video and found some useful information for yourself. If so, please uh, hit a like, subscribe, share the video and see you next time. Bye.